The final task of this project is to let the user assign favorites to resorts they really like. For example, they might say this one here, Squaw Valley in the US, this is a favorite, and have it reflected in the UI somewhere over here. Now, this is mostly straightforward using techniques we've already covered. We'll start off with a new favorites class that has a set to track which resort IDs the user likes. They're all unique right now, and they are basically the name, uh, lowercase with dashes rather than spaces. We'll then give this thing methods for adding, removing, and containing. Does it add an item, remove an item, and is it in there already? That will check the data automatically for us, but also send update notifications so Swift UI views reload automatically and write things out to user defaults for us. We'll then inject an instance of this favorites class into the environment and then add some UI to call the appropriate methods as needed. Now, Swift UI, uh, so Swift sets already contain methods for adding, removing, and checking for a particular element. But we're going to add our own around them so we can actually use object will change to update Swift UI and also save our data as we go. So it'll load and save correctly. This in turn means, if you remember, to be safe using private access control for our internal data. So other views can't poke around there directly. We don't want to do that. Use our wrapper methods to keep things safe and stored safely. Anyway, to get started, make a new Swift file here. And this will be called favorites.swift. Now this thing here uh, will have our class, which is favorites, and it will conform to the observable object protocol. First up, we'll have our private set containing the resort IDs the user has marked as a favorite. So we'll say private var resorts is a set of string, like that. Then we'll have a key here to store the uh, place we're writing to user defaults, or you might say to a file on disk, but we'll use user defaults here private let save key be favorites. Then an initializer to load stuff from user defaults or JSON, where you want to put this information. So you want to go ahead and load our save data here. And then if we're still here, use an empty array as our starting point for the set. Then we'll say there is a contains method. So I'll say func contains uh, a resort returns a bool just pass that straight down to the internal set. So resort, resort.contains, actually resorts here, sorry. Resorts, resorts.contains, that resort, like that. I can't type, come on, that resort, there we go. Uh, go ahead and add the thing to the thing, uh, the uh, uh, data. So we'll say here, uh, you're angry with me because I've written set string, which is fine. You should be resort.id, my mistake. Come on, <laughs> contains add we'll do func add a resort to our favorites this will send a, a change notification to swift ui then insert the id into our resort set here resort.id and then call a save method we haven't written yet we'll do that shortly that adds an item and then remove a resort again send a change announcement Pass it on to the internal set. So resorts.remove that member, resort.id, and then call the mythical save method again. And then finally, that save method. Func save, write out our data. Now, you'll notice I have missed out the actual loading and saving of our code. That will be your job to fill in shortly. Now, we need to make an instance of this thing when our content view is loaded, so app starts up, then place it into the environment so all the users in our app can share it. And so in content view, go ahead and say up here, uh, make a new at state object, var favorites, be a new favorites instance. And once you've written the loading and saving code, that will load from disk or from user defaults, wherever you've st stored it, and write it out again when changes happen. Then inject it into the environment. So I'm going to put this attached into the navigation view down here. Dot environment object, that favorite object. And so it's attached to the navigation view. So all views inside it will get that in its environment if it needs it. So it goes to welcome view, to the uh, main listing view, to everything that presents, the resort view and similar. They will all get access to it. And so in our resort view now, we can assume it will be there. It's going to be there. We can just say, uh, please read out 
Let's do it here. At environment object, var favorites is a favorites. Like that. Now, what you need to do is make sure you inject the same thing into your preview for the resort view. Otherwise, you'll find your previews start mysteriously crashing. So you said there'll be an environment object here, there won't be one. So down here in your preview, just say yes as a resort view with an environment object of a new empty favorites. That'll be fine. Okay. All this work hasn't actually accomplished anything yet because yes, the favorites class gets loaded and so forth, but it isn't actually used anywhere despite having properties to write it and read it correctly. Um, this is easy enough to fix because we're gonna add a button at the end of our resort view uh, after the resort certainty types down here. So the user can either add or remove this from their uh, favorites set. So down here, uh, we have our H stack for the facility types and so forth. Down here in our scroll view, I wanna say there's a new button. And a title for this depends on whether our favorites contains the current resort or not. Because if it does, we'll say remove from favorites. If it doesn't, we'll say add to favorites. Then inside there, we'll say if favorites dot contains our resort, then favorites dot remove our resort. Else favorites dot add our resort. Exactly as you might imagine. So we've made that nice button at the bottom. But to make it really stand out, I'm gonna do two things. First up, I'm gonna say it's got a button style of bordered prominent. So it'll stand out more clearly on the screen. Then add some padding around it. It doesn't go quite edge to edge on the screen. So hopefully now if I press Command R, you should see it running on the screen. It won't do a great deal yet in terms of seeing the main listing changing, but at least uh, we'll see the button work. So here's Snowbird. I scroll down and there's Add to Favorites. I press that and it's toggling it correctly. So it's working as it anticipated. Of course, what you want to do is say when I've added to the favorites, go back here and see Snowbird look different. It now notes in our favorites. And to do that, we'll head back to content view. And here we have our image being loaded, plus the VStack of the resort name and its run count. After that, the end of the label for the navigation link. We're gonna say, if our favorites contains, oops, contains that resort, then make a big old space, push everything to the right with a spacer, and add an image with a system name, system name of heart.fill, so a filled heart, with the accessibility, accessibility label of this is a favorite resort with a foreground color of red. And of course that works great, it's an SF symbol icon, so it'll be recolored really smoothly. And that should actually work pretty well for not a lot of code. Um, I'll go ahead and choose uh, Deer Valley, then add the favorites and go back. And there we go, there's our little heart symbol here. I'll choose this nice Italian one down here. Should add the favorites, then go back. And notice, notice this. It has pushed the text to one side. Despite having loads of space here, it's pushed it all into the corner. Uh, and you can kind of see what's happening here a little bit. Not why, but you can see what's happening here. Uh, in Xcode, when you've seen like these, these environment override buttons, go to the left too, and you'll see debug view hierarchy. This is a really helpful debugging tool, and it will show you what's actually happening with your layout behind the scenes. And you'll see here, in our text views, and you can see it's really crunched this one right the way down. There's a huge space on the right, followed by this tiny icon on the side. So the space is basically taking up literally half the screen here, so and occupy a lot of space. It's not really working very well. And it shouldn't do that. That's obviously wrong. We don't want that at all. And this happens because we've made an assumption in our code, and it's coming back to bite us in the backside. Um, we've said, that our navigation link here has a label, and the label had an image and a VStack. Had two things, A and B. And this is really, really common in uh, iOS generally. Icon and then thing to the side of it. And so SwiftUI was able to figure out roughly how it should look. But then we said, actually, there's more. 
I want to add a spacer and another image under sun situations. And now SwiftUI doesn't really know how to respond. It's kind of doing its best and it's getting it wrong. To fix this, we've got to tell SwiftUI explicitly what we want to have happen here. We want to say, I want a regular, plain old H stack dividing its space equally amongst its views as needed based on their requirements for space, um, as opposed to SwiftUI trying to figure it out on the fly. And so to do that, all you gotta do is wrap the whole of the label. So before the image, just here, then the image, the V stack, and this new if favorites contains condition go inside the H stack. So they'll size themselves appropriately inside that horizontal stack automatically. And now run it again. Now you'll remember your favorites will be gone. The safe code does not exist. The local does not exist. That will not work anymore. Um, so I have to do it again. So I'll choose, I think I had Snowbird last time. I forget which one it was. Um, add the favorites. That's fine. That's looking good. But then down here, the long one, I'll add the favorites. Hopefully, boom, it still looks good. So Swift UI is now doing the right thing because we're being explicit. There's no more assumptions here. So that makes the text layout correctly and it looks really nice now. Give your app a quick tryout so you think, because that's the final step. This project is done. Good job.